Welcome back. We're going to talk about images and first we're going to talk about really three important points about images. And that is the file formats for images, the file size for images, and the image size in pixels. There are a number of things to find out, to learn about creating images for the web properly using Photoshop or Illustrator usually. And that is, uh, those are topics for another course. We're not really going to cover those in this course. Robbins in her book has two excellent chapters, chapter 21 and chapter 22. These are going to be optional in this course. We're not going to go over them in detail, but they are excellent chapters. It's one of the great assets of having this book. You can find out what you need to know by reading those chapters on your own. So let's get started with the idea of file formats, all right? Um, you cannot use just any file format and put that image file on the web. So here in Photoshop, we can see I've got a, a graphic, a drawing of Albert, our mascot. Um, I've got a standard photograph uh, taken with a regular point and shoot camera. And I've got a logo for my own website that I created in Photoshop, but which could have been created in Illustrator. When you're creating in a program such as Photoshop or Illustrator, there's generally a file format that's associated with that program, and you're going to save your original work with all these layers uh, in it. You're going to save your original work in the file format of that program, and you're going to keep that file. But when you're ready to produce the file for the web, you're going to, in Photoshop in particular, you're going to save for web. And then you're going to see the formats that are available to you you're going to have GIF, some people say GIF, JPEG, which is best for photos, we'll talk about that, uh, Ping 8, which is great for all kinds of flat images, such as illustrations, logos, um, any kind of text, and Ping 24, which uh, is, produces a much larger file than a Ping 8, so usually we avoid that. Um, most of the time you're going to be saving things in the JPEG format if they are photos or highly detailed images like a painting, um, an illustration with a lot of tones, and gradients, and for logos and flat images and um, uh, things like Albert, you're probably going to save as a Ping 8. Photoshop is pretty much an industry standard, and you're able to save for the web just by opening the file menu and choosing that option. I wanted to say one extra thing about the, uh, the Albert image. You can see a kind of a checkerboard background of uh, white and gray squares. That means that the background for this image is transparent. Transparent backgrounds are only available for GIFs and Ping 8s. And what a transparent background does for you is you are able to uh, put that image against any color web page and it will look like it was cut out. You won't see a square around it. Um, so let me open up that HTML and if I change the background color to say white and save and reload and if I save the background color to say gray uh, kind of a medium gray, save and reload. So that's what a transparent background on an image does for you. And you cannot get that with JPEG. You can only get it with a GIF or a Ping 8. Now let's talk for a moment about file size. All right, every file on your computer and every file on the web has a certain size that's measured in kilobytes or megabytes, right? Megabytes are bigger. And every file on a page affects the download time of that page. Now, you know for yourself, you don't like it when a page takes more than a second or two to load. You might just close it or go back and not look at it at all. So it's very important to optimize your images to make them small for the web. So I've got three different versions of a photograph of a giraffe here on my hard drive, which we'll be looking at in a moment. And I just wanted to show you the kind of difference in file sizes. So the original 
taken with a point and shoot camera is 14 megabytes. All right, 14 megabytes. Your web page, the whole size of all the files, everything attached to one page really shouldn't exceed a megabyte, maybe a megabyte and a half. So 14 megabytes, you are not going to put an image that large on a web page. So you're going to reduce the size in pixels, which we'll talk about in a moment. And also saving it as a JPEG can also help you reduce the size. Let me show you the difference. So from 14 megabytes to 2.1 megabytes. Now what's more is I have another version of the same giraffe photograph that is only 84 kilobytes, 84K, not megabytes, right? So it's quite a lot smaller than the other two. And let me show you uh, how two of these images look in the browser. The smaller one in file size is actually a smaller image on a web page, as you see here at the top. The larger one, the one that uh, was um, two megabytes, it's really a much larger version in pixels of the same photograph. In fact, it is so large that it extends past the right-hand edge of my browser. My browser is full size, and this image is actually too big for my browser. So, of course, the next thing we're going to talk about is the image size, and this is very much related to the file size. So to put image size into context, you have to think about the device sizes, right? So how wide is your screen? Not in inches, not measured diagonally, but measured horizontally in pixels. How many pixels can your screen actually show you? So because iMacs have really huge screens, um, we can think about those, right? So you're looking at somewhere between about 1,900 and 2,500 pixels in width, okay? So keep that, that uh, measurement in mind, that number of pixels, right? Now what about a phone? Phones used to be able to display a lot fewer pixels. Not that long ago, the, the width was only about well, the height, really, because it's a phone, and normally we're holding it vertically. Um, so the, the long measure would be the height for a phone. Um, but of course, you might turn it horizontally to watch a video or to view some kind of nice photos, right? So that width not very long ago was only 640 pixels. But now with phones, we're up to well over 1,000 pixels when we turn the phone horizontal. And even when we're holding the phone in its normal vertical uh, aspect, the Samsungs are up over 1,000 pixels uh, in, in the width when you're holding the phone vertically. I have a photograph open in Photoshop, and in the Finder, you can see that the size of that photograph is 7.5 megabytes. All right, so that's the original photo, the way it came out of the camera. So over in Photoshop, you might look at this and say, oh yeah, that looks like a nice size to put on the web. It looks perfectly okay. It's going to be like this small giraffe at the top. It's not going to take up too much space. But what we're looking at right now is not the photograph at its full size. If you look down in the lower left corner, you'll see that we are looking at the photograph at just under 17% of its actual size. So if we change that to 100%, this photo is way too big, right? Way, 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 way too big. So uh, back to a more reasonable size. So what do we do to make this image file uh, suitable for the web? Well, again, Photoshop has everything we need. Uh, on the image menu, it's got something called image size. And when we open that up, we can see that uh, if yours doesn't say pixels, you change it to pixels. And we can see that the original of this image is 4,000 pixels wide. Now, you know what we just learned about the width 
of a screen in pixels. None of those screens are 4,000 pixels wide. Also, most of the time, you're not going to display this image wall to wall, that is side to side. Sometimes maybe, but not always, right? So how are you going to reduce the size of this image to make it suitable for the web? And as you design pages and apps for phones and other devices, you're going to think about how wide is this device and how wide does the image have to be. So let's just as a rule of thumb say um, a lot of images might be maybe about a thousand pixels wide. And if you notice when I change this image width to a thousand, the height changed along with it. And that is because I have this little lock on. If I took it off, I would mess up my images. I would make it look squeezed or stretched, right? So you always keep that constraining lock on. And that way, when you change the width, the height will change along with it proportionally. Your image will not be distorted. But mainly we're talking about how wide should the image be in pixels. And again, be sure that you're looking at pixels and not one of the other measurements. So you say, okay. And at first it looks like you made it teeny tiny, but remember we're looking at it at 16.67%. So we'll make that go back to 100. And now we're still looking at a pretty big image, right? Pretty big. But I want you to see uh, how is this file size going to translate, right? Because we know it was 7.5 megabytes before. So let's do our save for web, not save as, but save for web. And it's a photograph. So what are we going to choose? We are going to choose JPEG, right? And let's see, high. Yeah, if we're going to make it that large, we want it to be high or very high. And we can also see um, down here in the corner, we can see how big is that file going to be roughly. You'll see in a moment that's not exactly accurate, but it says 167K. And a couple of other things we want to look at. We want to always check optimized. We do want to embed the color profile. Um, a little bit of blur is really, really good for JPEGs. I usually do 0.2. Um, not everybody would do that, but I would. And metadata none. I'm going to talk about that in a moment, but for right now, let's say none. Let's see how small we can get this. So I'm going to save, and it's very important. I don't want to destroy my original. I do not want to lose my original. If I save it with the same name in the same place, I'm going to overwrite my original, and my original will be lost forever absolutely not what I want to do. Okay, so I don't want it to be saved as pantheon.jpg. I'm going to save it. I'm going to actually give it a number so we know which uh, that it was a thousand, right? So give it a new name so we don't lose the original and save. And now I want to look at my finder and say, well, what is the difference in file size? And look at this here. I have taken a 7.5 megabyte image and reduced it down to 172K, simply by uh, resizing it appropriately for the web. We haven't looked at a lot of HTML in this video, and uh, well, that's because we were talking about the file sizes and the image sizes and the uh, file formats. But I will have another video uh, talking about various aspects of the HTML that we use to put images on the page.